Welcome to the channel and welcome to this 2000 point match play game between Grey Knights and Tau. Grey Knights versus Tau, that's not a matchup you see every day and it's been a long time since I've put my Grey Knights on YouTube. I've put them on DZ a couple of times in the past, but not on YouTube for a long time. And this is a matchup where I didn't really want to field Grey Knights versus Tau at any point in the past because Grey Knights would tend to get blown away by Tau. But with this book here, maybe they finally stand a chance. Richard the Dam gives them extra resilience and extra bang for their buck. And also chapter approved 2019 has helped. So today on the channel, we're playing 2000 points worth of Grey Knights versus Tau. And we'll see if the T Grey Knights punch can compete with the Tau shootiness. We're playing Crusade, which is the first Eternal War mission in 2019 chapter approved. Um, the Grey Knights are deployed on this side. The Tau are deploying on that side. We've got four objectives running down the middle, look. Four running right down the middle. And the way it works is you score... It's first blood, slay the Warlord Linebreaker. There's no cards in this game. You score a point, or three points, one minute. A point. It's a point for every objective that you control at the end of your turn. So, for example, I could be at the start of your turn. So, for example, in my turn, I could run up and get on that objective but not score it yet. And then in the Tau turn, they blow me off of it. And so I won't be scoring it at the start of my turn. Actually denying your opponent the opportunity to score these objectives at the start of their turn is going to be critical. And because you're only scoring one point for each objective, actually scoring them will be critical as well. If someone gets three points in the lead, it's um, it's easy to hold on to a lead like that. So we've got some um, nice terrain set up all over the place. And the narrative that we're doing in this one is, why are Grenades fighting Tau? Well, we're way over the eastern fringe of the galaxy where the Tau continue their expansion and they've got a pathfinder force they've got a wayfinder force and they've come to this world spreading out across it and um, investigating the local terrain and uh, cataloging the fauna and flora that they find here and there's there's this weird chaotic temple um, this ruin on this world that you can see here and the grey knights have heeded the pro prognosticars and they have sensed that the tau are gonna in their ignorance and in their youthful enthusiasm are gonna be tinkering with some of these gray, uh, chaos shrines, ancient chaos shrines, and unleash a horror from the deeps. So the Grey Knights are here to stop them doing this. The Grey Knights are here to push them back. So a nice simple narrative. The Grey Knights have foreseen that the chaos force will erupt on this planet, and uh, because they've foreseen it. They are going to try and prevent it. And we welcome to the channel for the first time, Carl. Say hello, Carl. Hi, Carl. Thanks for coming down. You're welcome. And uh, four hour drive yes. from all the way up, up north. Middlesbrough, yeah. Middle, no idea where that is. <laughs> but really thanks for coming. Got up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And uh, you said you've got ten armies? Ten-ish. Uh, Ten-ish yeah. ten armies. Ten or 11, and yeah. Tau are one of... When's the last time you played Tau then, if you... Uh... Uh, had a few practice games uh, before coming down here, so I'd say about two or three weeks ago was the last time I played. Okay, all right. So you're keeping your arm in, you're keeping your eye in. Yes. And uh, many, many different armies, which is good, because um, I really appreciate the fact that you come all the way down here for many... And I appreciate the fact that you brought Tau, because we don't get to see Tau very often on the channel. I don't know very many Tau opponents, but um, you're a Tau opponent with many other things as well <laughs> and I think originally um, you were going to place we were going to did we actually plan what else we were going to play what I was going to bring uh, no. I don't think we did no, did we it's just no. <laughs> this ritual of the dam came out and I said I want to play Grey Knights and you went okay so we are playing Grey Knights um, yeah battle mat comes from hot dice miniatures the train I made um, you can see where all the plus one cover is all over the place. Don't know where this comes from. It may be GW in the old days or some other. I honestly can't remember where that's come from. Um, and if you'd like to support us and help us make more battle reports, then please consider subscribing to deploymentzone.tv. It's where the magic happens. 
and uh, where there's many narrative campaigns now. You said in your car on the way down, you're finishing off listening to 27 minutes, I did. which is Orcs versus Imperium. Yeah. And you got to see Howling Mad Murphy. For the first time. For the first time. The big reveal of Murphy is on Deployment Zone. So if you guys want to support us and want to check that out, then um, I encourage you to do so. Right, 2,000 points. Grey Knights versus Tau. Let's go and have a look at these armies. Again, this is all of my Grey Knights before Chapter of Proof 2019 dropped. This was about 2,200 points or plus. Now it's under. It's 1995. And to do that, I had to take a Paladin Ancient, which I've never fielded before, and make both of these Nemesis Grandmasters in suits. Um, and that got up to 1995 points. Carl's telling me he had a similar drop for Tau, which is going to be interesting. So we both got some bonuses. Um, this is a battalion with the one with all the fast in, because I've got three units of interceptors here. Grey Knights basically got shock, salt, bottle discipline, all that sort of stuff. And they're all psychers, for those that don't know. And when they cast their psychic powers, they always cast them on a plus one. So smites go off on a five. Now, Grey Knights, when they smite, sorry, smites normally go off on a five. So, but the smites go off on a four. Now, Grey Knights, when they smite, it doesn't add. It doesn't go four, five, six, seven, eight. It, they always cast on a four, and they always do one damage. They can do extra stuff versus demons, because these are the demon hunters. But we're not playing demons now. We're just killing Xenos. We've got to kill the Xenos as well as the demon. And then after killing the Xenos, um, destroying this temple and killing all the demons that come out of it. So that's what Grey Knights do. Um... So, Warlord. Warlord is this guy, first of the fray, and he's got the relic, the librarian, called the Santic Shard, which gives him an additional plus one to cast, and he can re-roll his casting. Now, Psychic Power is going on here, to keep it simple for me. All the Terminators, got three squads of Terminators, and they've all got Hammer Hand. And then all the guys on foot, all the guys in normal power armor, they've all got Gate of Infinity. The reason why I've done that is because um, Gate of Infinity is a highly useful power which allows me to throw it out 12 inches away and teleport another Grey Knight forward. And I've put it on Interceptors. Interceptors can jump around all over the place. They move 12 inches and they've got a once per game free uh, deep strike where you can pick them up and put them down somewhere else. It's called Teleport Shunt. So they can do that once per game. And by giving them Gate of Infinity, I don't intend to put the gate on them. I intend them to throw their gate out to something else. And so they're a fast unit that can jump around all over the place. So after the movement phase, I could potentially jump next to my librarian or a nemesis grandmaster and then throw gate out on one of them. You see, it's a spreading the love. And I've also given gate, as I said, to this unit of power armor dudes here. So hammer hand on all the Terminators. Again, you can chuck it out 12 inches away. And um, so it, yeah, it keeps it nice and simple for me. So psychic powers on these two guys here, I've given them sanctuary. The grandmasters can cast two, one of them being a smite. So smite and sanctuary, he's got sanctuary smite. And then this guy's got, these are on my little cheat sheets so I remember what's going on. And this one's got armored resilience. This one's got etheric manipulation, armored resilience. This dude's got, um, my librarian's got Warp Shaping and Imperium Domination. Imperium Domination is a CP farm. I can, if I cast a five with a Sanctic Shard, I can get a command point back again. And I really want command points because there's some good stratagems now. And Warp Shaping allows me to change the tides of the warp because at the start of the first battle round, the st uh, you get to choose which tide is in effect and there's two really good ones. There's one that allows you to count as though you're in cover and if you're fully in terrain, it's minus one to hit and there's one that allows you to do damage to smites. And once that is locked down, it remains the same tide. It rem remains the same power all the way through the game unless he changes it with warp shaping. So um, he's the idea with this guy is he stays at the back somewhere or in a corner somewhere. And if the town want to come over and kill the librarian, they can come over and kill the librarian. I think I might put some bodyguards with him, but uh, that's his plan. The other thing that um, Grey Knights can do is they can teleport in. Everyone here can teleport on the battlefield except the Nemesis Dread Knights. You have to pay 10 points for personal teleporters on these guys to teleport them in. So Terminators obviously can teleport in, but for example, even Strike Squad guys can teleport in if they choose to. Um, so I did spend the 10 points on these two guys to teleport in, uh, depending on 
uh, yeah, well, I didn't know what army Carl was bringing down and I didn't know who might be going first or second. So I have spent the points on them, but l I think I've got, uh, currently I'm the attacker, so I think I might only just teleport one of them in. We'll see. Um, oh, this guy's a brother captain. And a brother captain, Grey Knight units within six inches of him can double their smite range because Grey Knight smite on a four and it's 12 inch range, one damage. So within six inches of this guy, it's smite on a four, 24 inch range, one damage. Or if the certain tide is in effect, that's 24 inch range, two damage. So he is coming along, Grandmaster's coming along. Um, he's got a side cannon and falchions. These guys have got um, heavy flamers and Gatlin P silencers. He's got falchion combi plasma. Um, this guy at the back's got the sword and the heavy flamer and the heavy P silencer. And essentially what you see in each list is what you've got. So in the incinerators, in the interceptor squads, for example, there's an incinerator each and the justicars have got hammers over here. Justicar got hammer. There's a Gatling silencer in that one. And in the squads of terminators, each is pretty much the same. There's a um, side cannon each, just a card with hammers in each, and there's an extra hammer in one of these squads, ha an extra hammer in that squad there. So I've got a range of different weaponry spread out all over the place. Remember all the force weapons on all my close combat units are also D3 damage a time. This is a short range army. Um, nothing in here, none of the range of my guns is more than 24 inches. I need to get in close, I need to start smiting, I need to try and get all choppy chop with the Tau. And if they stay back and outrange me, or if they jump around all over the place with their speed, with their maneuverability, then it could be death by a thousand cuts by the Dirty Dirty Xenos. Talking about Dirty Xenos, let's go and have a look at the Tau. Right, this is 2,000 points of lovely Tau. It's a battalion, spearhead, and vanguard, which is 10 command points to play with. Um, who's your warlord and relics and things, sir? Uh, it's my warlord, Commander Novastorm. Novastorm. He is, uh, so I'm running the Dalyth Sept. Right. Uh, that essentially gives the anything with a Sept keyword, if they stand still, the, the count has been in cover. So I'll press one of their armor save. So everything here? Yes. Does that work on crew as well? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I don't oh, believe so. so okay. Just the drawings and the, the tower. The so tower. essentially these guys, if they stay still, they could get a two up cover save. If, just if they stay still. Just if they stay still. So um, they, you don't have to be in cover either, just like me. So I don't have to be in cover if that tide is in effect, and you don't have to be in cover. And if you stay still, you count as a two up save. Adaptive uh, camouflage. Oh, I like it. Blurring into Absolutely. the background. Okay, so he's a um, warlord trait? Uh, he's got the Dalith specific one, so it's called Gunship Diplomat. Okay. Uh, it essentially gives the any auxiliary units that are within six inches the greater good ability. Yep. So essentially supporting Overwatch. Yeah, so that's one of the things Tau do, right? Tau do, but Crute, um, Vespid, things like that don't. So I've taken the, the fluff behind Dalith is they tend to run a lot of Crute auxiliaries. Yeah. Um, so they'll, if I castle up around him, it'll essentially give any crew within six inches the ability to uh, support an overwatch if yeah. needed. Tau supporting fire, that's this. If I charge a Tau unit, they fire overwatch, and any Tau units within six inches also fire overwatch. Yes, I believe it's six. I'll double check it. Yeah. It's three or six inches. But nice. Yeah. And so you've given that out to your crew. Yes. A Dalyeth list with the crew auxiliaries. Gorgeous. Yes. Um, um, the other HQ in that battalion is the Ethereal. Right. Uh, he's just got a hover drone. Uh, paid the five points to give him a hover drone. And okay. He comes with two shield drones. Two shield drones. This dude's got two shield drones. He does as well. I think when you deploy, they don't count as a same. No, they count as a separate unit. Uh, can be targeted and such. Um, so they're essentially for passing off wounds. Yeah. How uh, close do drones need to be to pass? Inches. Three inches. Yes. They don't even have to be in front anymore, do they? No. Uh, they they can... can jump in. They can take anything from anything with a battle suit keyword or infantry keyword. So one of these drone units could essentially split off from him and join these guys? Uh, yeah, if they were close enough. Yeah, okay. They could uh, take wounds for the Cold Stars or the Riptides or whatever. So this is two Cold Star guys? Two Cold Stars, uh, both just with quad fusion guns. Nice. Fusion blasters. Dirty, dirty town. <laughs> I've given the one with the, the, the blue guns. Uh, he's got the relic. I've gone for Dalith again. Uh, it's called Dynamic Mirrorfield, so he's minus one to hit. Minus one to hit? Yes. Nice. So if you stand still, cover, yes. and also if minus, minus one, one to hit all the time. So he's definitely blurring in the background. And he's dude. a character, so he can't be targeted. Oh, yeah, of course. And cold stars are really quick too, right? Yes, minimum 20-inch move. Nice. 
Right, what else are we looking at? Uh, to round off the battalion, I've yes. gone for three squads of ten recruit. Okay. I don't see them very often, and they actually got a point reduction in chapter approved, so yeah, worked out quite nicely. They are they can do a little scout move at the start of the uh, game as well, so they can push forward a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're troops, they're yeah. cheap, they're nice for screening, nice for deep strike denial. I've got Grey Knights, so deep strike denial is definitely a thing. Um, okay, sniper drones. Uh, yes, I've got two squads of six <clears throat> sniper drones. Right. Um, but they're not seen very often, so I'll probably explain a little bit about them. So uh, they have long shot pulse rifles, so they're uh, 48 inch range. They have the sniper keyword, so they can target characters. Uh, they're rapid fire as well, so they'll be getting two shots within 24 inches. Okay. Um, they have a minus one to hit inbuilt as well. Have they? Still field, yeah. Still field. Yeah. But you said they hit on fives. They hit on fives. They have normal drone ballistic skill. Um, I have taken a drone controller. Okay. On my warlord. I forgot to mention that as well. Um, this guy? Uh, this guy. This guy? Yeah. So if they're within six inches of him, I yeah. six inches, yeah. uh, they get plus one to their ballistic skill. Okay. You can buff it further by taking a fire sight marksman, but I didn't have the time to get one. <laughs> uh, so if they're game. within six inches of him, they're yeah. hitting on fours, they're rapid fire, forty-eight yeah. inch range, yes. with a minus one to hit. Uh, and they do mortal wounds on a wound of six. Yeah, and he can pass off onto shield drones. Yes. That drone yeah. uh, sniper drones have the uh, savvy protocols rule, so if I run okay. short on shield drones, they can jump in front of a battle. Suit Is that the plan play. here? Is the plan to move your warlord around with these dudes? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah, I think that's he's going to be. He's going to be castled together with the uh, sniper drones. And okay. Maybe the broadsides. We'll and see. then other drones, we've got a unit of shield drones. Five shield drones. And then two units of five marker drones. Yes. So you're bringing all the drones. You've got marker drones, shield yeah. drones, sniper drones. I like the fact that you haven't just bought shield drones, shield drones, shield drones, shield drones. No, everywhere. it's very boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, my it's cool. style. I quite like it. I've, I've went for a spread of many different units. Uh, yeah, well, you're also embracing the narrative, having the Dalioth Wall or Dalioth Relic. Dalioth is good stuff. Um, so two cold stars. Yes. We have Crew Hounds. Crew Tox. Crew Tox. <laughs> they actually got a little bit of a point reduction. I think they were 10 points reduction each. Yeah. They're only 25 points each. They're not great, but I really like the models, and I don't think I've ever seen them on any YouTube game, or even in any games that I've played people before. I've never ever seen anybody bring them, so I thought it'd be... Fun to give them a go. Uh, they're forty-eight inch range, strength seven, D three damage minus one. Are they guns. are they snipers as well? No, no, no. And um, they're rapid fire though, so they can put out a few shots. They're uh, pretty tough as well. They give uh, Tau a little bit of extra resilience, which I think relaxes sometimes. Sweet. So they're, they're okay. Um, crisis team. Yes. With what and what? Uh, so three crisis suits. Uh, they've all each one of them has a plasma rifle and a missile pod. Okay. That is it. And then the broadside team, the missile tides. I mean, they're too good not to bring, aren't yes, they? Missile tides really are good. epic. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the fact that you didn't bring triple riptide. Thank you very much. No, definitely. And you haven't brought the Gatling one. No, I went for the ion accelerator. Okay. Um, with he's also got uh, twin smart missiles as well. So I've nice. got smart missiles on the broadsides as well. So that lets me give me a bit of versatility with shooting stuff that's out of the line of sight. Yep. Um, the ion accelerator can be the, the Gatling is the better option. It's cheaper as well. Okay. Um, but. I've got a lot of iron in the list. That's another little theme I've got running through. Yeah. Um, so it fits with what I wanted to do. Cool. Ghost oh, kill. He's That's also cool. got um, target lock, so he ignores the penalty for moving and firing heavy ah, weapons. Yes, yes. And he also has early warning override. No so if idea. Anything, anything deep strikes within 12 inches of him, right. he shoots it. With, yeah. a, with a minus one. Is he the only one with that? Yes. <laughs> so don't deep strike within 12 inches of this big no, guy. it'll be a little deep strike dinner. Move him far it without might, it. will hopefully help to maybe keep some of your... If you deep strike him with your stone balls, it will hopefully keep them out of rapid fire. Right? Yeah. Ghost kill, that's another minus one to hit. Minus two with Mi the drones. Yeah, so uh, kill the... the drones separately, but uh, if yeah. the drones are on the table and within three inches of him, uh, they, he's minus two to hit. Well, my, my experience with Tau is kill the drones first. <laughs> it's generally uh, the way to do it. Yeah. yeah. And then um, two or more stealth drones from Forge World. Yes. Which are lovely. You didn't put the missiles on them, though. I didn't have the points on It's got long yeah. range, two long range burst rifles. Yes. Um, and so they're, they're basically normal burst cannons uh, with a bit, bit more range and a minus one. Yeah. And the stealth drones, they're natural minus one to hit. Natural minus one to hit, and they, are, they also ignore the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Yeah. So you've got quite some uh, minuses here. 
that was the idea. I was hoping to go for a, the adaptive camouflage. I also wanted a few units with a bit of minus one to hit to make yeah. them a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier. And it does. It's there's no tanks. It's a nice pathfinder wayfinder list. You've got the drones and the crutes scouting into this area, and they're fast units dropping in all over the place to check out this ancient chaos ruin. It's a ru ruin, ruin, ruin. That works. Um, so it's a nice themed list. I haven't got any vehicles either. Well, actually, the suits count. The big things count as suits. But there's no tanks. No. None of the list has got tanks. Just bodies. One more thing. Uh, I've got yep. my, my hero crew oh. shaper as well. He's a... Uh, hero crew shaper. Bit of a legend. Uh, the last few games I've used him, he's always done something very silly. What, what, what do they do? Uh, he just gives... Uh, he's basically a lieutenant uh, ability to crew. So uh, any crew within six inches can re-roll one's to wound. Just to crew? Just to crew. Just and to he's crew. a legend? He charged Abaddon in the last game. And didn't end well for him, but uh, <laughs> he gave it a solid go. Has he has he earned himself a name yet? Not yet. I'll wait until he uh, maybe okay maybe kill someone first. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, it's a lovely list. It's a it's a gorgeous list. It's a different tower list. I do like the overlapping buffs and the minuses to hit and the stuff like that. And uh, it does look to me like you've got a fair amount of speed going on here as well with the drones with the with the cold starts and you've got a yeah. fair amount of maneuverability. Typically we see static gun line tower lists. This isn't that. No, uh, it can, I can castle up if need be. Yep. Um, it works quite well with that, but it's, it's, it's surprisingly mobile. It's, you know, the suits are really quick, the crew to seven inch movement base as well. Uh, the drones and the cold stars are really fast. So it's, it's gonna surprise me a bit of speed about it. It's gonna be very interesting. I've got no idea how this fight is gonna go. Right, let's go on to deployment. Right, we're deployed for this 2000 point game of Tau versus Grey Knights. This is the stuff that I've chosen to stick in reserve because currently I'm the attacker, so currently I can choose whether to go first. These guys are all going to be teleporting in. And this is what the battle grid looks like for my Grey Knight forces. At the start of the first battle round, then I can choose which tide is active. So if Carl seizes the initiative, I've made sure that everything is in terrain except for this thing here. I couldn't fit the non-nemesis Grandmaster dude in terrain. But there is my Libby and we have a uh, strike team nearby and um, interceptors, interceptors, interceptors. And then this is what the Tau line looks like. The crisis suits are currently in reserve. We've got the Remora Stealth Drones up here. These guys are Toughness 5 with 3 wounds. So they are a bit key, but they've got the fly keyword, so I can't assault them. Even interceptors, who can teleport around all over the place, they don't have the fly keyword, so I won't actually be punching these guys. But with three wounds, they could be a bit squishy, but each of them does chuck out eight strength five shots. And there's a crute screen in front, and some more crutes. And where is your warlord again? Uh, well, so Rick's there. Warlord's down there, surrounded by a bunch of sniper drones, and because he's the drone controller, they'll all be hitting on fours. And then, interestingly enough, you put your XV-88s up here. Yes. Now, with the missile tides, they've got a 36-inch range, so they're covering half of the board anyway. And remember, because your Borrower set? Borrower set? Uh, Dalioth. Dalioth set! <laughs> <laughs> um, so long as you stand still, you count as in cover yes. anyway. So uh, Ghost Kill can infiltrate forward. He's up there with a couple of his drones, quite close to these guys. If I get first turn, I could jump up there and charge you. Mm -hmm. um, we're saying that um, um, stuff can jump across the gap quite easily. Where the gaps are small, where the gaps are big, we can't jump across the gaps. We're also saying if we had track vehicles, they wouldn't be able to get up and over here. But uh, a Nemesis Dread Knight suit could walk up and climb over, over these things if it wanted to. And... So could you, you could climb up. But obviously, if I'm charging up and down and over, my charge would be dramatically extended because I'm going up and down. Um, who's that guy back there? That's the other cold star suit yes. in the corner because you've got range. So um, now the other thing I have to ask you is, would you like to try and steal from me? Stealing's bad. <laughs> I know, Stealing but... will be very bad if Tao go first. It's <sighs> very bad for me. So good luck. Yes. Let's see if we manage to do that. But no, so it's going to be Grey Knight's turn one as they push forward. This young race is here, tinkering with things that are beyond their ken, and the Grey Knights are here to stop them. 
Here we are after the green arts movement phase in turn one. The tide of escalation is active, which means that my smites do two damage. And essentially what I'm trying to do is stay away from a portion of his army. Uh, ghost kills move 10 or 12. Their range is 24, 36 inch range on the broadsides as well. Up here, there's a spread of gun lines all the way across the battle grid. So if I come from the right and move across to the left, I might be able to negate some of the firepower that's coming out of his lines in turn one. So I've shunted with my interceptors, 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 and I'm on two objectives. You score these objectives one point at the start of battle round two. So I don't score that one now and uh, Carl won't be scoring that one in his first turn it's in the start of battle round two so to to so in battle round two if I'm still on these three objectives I will get three points and yes this is a once per game shunt thing but there's a one command point stratagem that you can do called teleportation override or something and you can you can choose to shunt them again plus they're pretty quick they move 12 they're nippy and uh, I knew I'd be smiting some uh, crude screens. That's exactly how I would do it with cheap four-point units, uh, four-point models. So I am going to be smiting a bunch of crude and storm bolting a bunch of crude and trying to get first strike. But yeah, the Dread Knight moving over here. Everything moving over here to try and keep away from the guns. And then in the psychic phase, nice simple start. The idea is, this is my nemesis grandmaster dude. He's got four up in vulnerable save. The idea is to try and get Sanctuary on him to get it up to a 3 up and vulnerable save. So let's do that. Watch has value of 6, so it's a 5 for a Grey Knight. And that passes. He has now got a 3 up and vulnerable save. And the second thing I want to do is Gate of Infinity him away from the big guns. Gate is a 6, so it's a 5, and you can chuck it out. And that passes as well, so he's going to disappear and reappear all the way over here away from the big gun. So now he's got a three up and vulnerable save. Oh, and the start of my turn, I spent two CP on he the prognosticars. This guy's got a standard for, uh, five up in vulnerable save, this normal Dread Knight, that gets him up to a four up in vulnerable save. So four up in vulnerable save, three up in vulnerable save. That's a good start. Um, now the other thing I need to do is, well, now I've done him, that's one of his powers, Sanctuary. Let's do his other power, which is a smite. And it needs a four. And that's a peril. So that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I won't CP that. Um, I'll take the D3 damage on myself. That's two damage on myself. And it does two damage on your crew hounds. That puts my non-Warlord Nemesis Grandmaster down to ten wounds and crew rat. They have four wounds each. They're quite chunky. Okay, so his psychic power is done. Let's start the smite train. Un well, I've already started the smite train. Let's do it with these guys smiting out. I need four. That passes to damage on the Kroot. This unit here passes on a four and the last unit passes. And essentially I've killed two Kroot and four Kroot. And then we're coming across here to my non-Warlord, my Librarian. Empiric Channeling. It's normally a six, but goes down to a five and then down to a four because of my Warlord trait. Um, that passes. No, it doesn't. It's a five to pass, not a, um, it's a seven, not a six, not a five because of his thing. So I can re-roll that with his relic. That passes, that gets me ACP back. And then at the end of the psychic phase, I'm going to do warp shaping because I've done two damage smite all across the board. And now I want to change the tides of the warp. This will be a, a three to cast because of the shard. That passes and that means now the tide of shadows is in effect. So... All of my Grey Knight units uh, get the benefit of cover, a bit like your Sept. Yes. And anyone wholly within the train piece will be minus one to hit. So I've basically switched the tide around, ready for the shooting phase, which is about to unload on me. Sounds like copying. <laughs> yeah, I'm copying what the Tau do. You're blurring into the background with camo and I'm blurring it and it's lights and stuff and warp stuff yeah. fizzing around these psychers. Right, let's, um, let's go into the shooting phase. Right, let's start on the left flank with this squad of interceptors here. Now, I could fire at the flyers, but I'm really looking for first strike. I've got seven storm bolters in rapid fire range of these crews. At rapid fire two, this is 28 shots, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones because my nemesis grandmaster suit dude is nearby. So, threes to hit. After the re-roll, that was 22 hits. Strength four, toughness three, wounding on threes. We have 12 t-shirt saves of six up. Don't they benefit from the set thing? No, they don't have the set keyword, unfortunately. Mm. So um, save. It looks like first strike Two. to me. Yep. 
let's move down the flag, ignoring the Nemesis suit for a second and fire all these storm bolters into the drones here. I am hitting on threes and re-rolling ones. I got less ones that time. Drones are made of hard metal and plastics and stuff, so their toughness four. So I am wounding on fours. That's okay. Four up armor becomes a three up. And a kill two. Right, let's rinse and repeat with the second squad. I am still in rapid fire range. Threes to hit, re-rolling ones. Eight hits with the re-rolls, fours to wound. Whoa, that's pretty good. And three up saves. And a kill two more. Okay, after much umin and arin, I've just burnt three CP because so far I've just killed some croup really. So the bang in the Tau army is still there. Burning three CP on. Big guns never tire. So my uh, vehicle here can move and fire as if it stays still. So he hits on twos. Firing at drones with a cat Gatling P silencer, I'm hitting on threes because they're minus one to hit. If I hadn't have spent the CP, I'd be hitting them on fours. So I'm hitting them on threes. But this weaponry is a strength four weaponry and your toughness five and you count was in cover. So I've spent another two CP on psychic onslaught. So my Gatling P silencer has plus one strength and plus one AP. And then the heavy flamer is gonna hit the crew hounds. Long story short, 12 shots coming in to the drones and hit on threes instead of fours. And I'm re-rolling ones. And there's a chunk of twos. Oh no, only two twos. So I do get 10 hits. Now, I'm strength five now. Your toughness five. Yep. So this is the hard part. This is the bit that I expect to fail. Wounding on fours. That's okay. And that's AP minus one. Now they technically, they haven't moved. So their four up becomes a three up. Yep. Which well, comes as now a four up yep. again. Uh, yeah, so one is dead. You make three of them. Well, the way it works is this is D3 each because it's ah, Gatling yes. silencers. Oh, so, uh, and they've got three wounds each. So I've got three attempts at this. First one. And then that will kill one. And then D3 on the last one. Oh, Yay, oh, 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 I killed the squad. Yay, that worked. Remora's gone. Cost me three CP to do it, though. It did. It did. It puts me down to five because I did get one back from my warp stuff. Get right. Rid of, get rid of some amount of speed as well. Yes. Right, um, heavy incinerator now splashing over to them. It's in 12 inch range, flamer. So auto hits for five hits. And this is strength uh, six. Yeah. Minus one, two damage, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, three wounds. Yeah, they just have a six up t shirt save. Yeah. So that just burns straight through your armor, kills one, and kills another. Because they're four wounds each. It's two damage each. Oh, two damage each. Yeah. Oh. And they've got four wounds oh. each. So I've got one crew hound left. Look, there's a tower shaped gap on this flank. This is actually working. Um, now I have a side cannon over here. And I don't know what the leadership of drones is, but it's probably quite good. Um, anyway, I'm gonna shoot the side cannon into the crew screen. Let's kill, because look, I could shout shoot with a riptide with my heavy side cannon. But you've got, I know it's minus one, but you've got a two up and then yep. minus one, then back to two up because of the ball can set. I got it right. Uh, no, Dalyath. Dalyath set. Dalyth, I'm not Dalyth. gonna get that right until about <laughs> turn four, Dalyath. So let's just shoot some crew <coughs> instead with this dude here. It's heavy, I moved, so I'm hitting on fours and I hit twice and it is strength seven. And I wound once. His heavy side cannon just kills a crew. It's AP minus one, two damage, blows one of them away. And that is the end of my shooting phase. Right, now I want to charge. It's not Grey Knights without a charge. So this suit which jumped forward is gonna try and charge that Krutox hound dude there. So you have much Overwatch about to splash out towards me. Overwatch failed to wound because it turns out the supporting fire, the Tau keyword thing, is six inches and you're just out. So no damage on this thing. It's a nine inch charge to hit that Krut hound. And I rolled a nine. So he makes it there, charge phase continuing. So what you're telling me is if I charge out into the crew here, then I'm gonna get overwatched by a Riptide? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll stay where I am. Um, so my nemesis Grandmaster in suit gets to fight. He has five attacks, plus one for the charge, and plus one for a pair of nemesis doom fists. So uh, seven attacks, and he hits on twos. Rerolling ones, because that's what he does. Strength 12. <laughs> uh, Minus three, D3, da he's punched. He's pulverized into oblivion. Then I might take a crude shaper in. Should I, I, I can't get up there. Can I get up there? Anyway, I'll do that. That's all I'll do. And that 
is the end of Grey Knights, turn one. They have punched the left flank. That's quite successful and got me first strike. And I'm currently camped on one, two, three objectives. And the other thing that I'm doing is trying to mitigate some of the tower firepower, which is about to erupt back into my lines. Um, currently as well, because of the warps of the tide thing, every single one of my units, except for the Nemesis, except for the Dread Knights, are going to be minus one to hit as well. So, um, yeah, let's find out what the tower do in turn one. One minute, morale, morale for... Uh, the drones. Yes. Uh, leadership six. Okay. Oh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Three. You lost four. Four, five, six, seven, so I'll lose him. Okay. And the group lost yes. five. One plus five is six. Yep, they manage to stand firm. Right, now we go into tower. Turn one. Here we are after the tower movement phase, as Septalioth respond to the Grey Knight aggression. Over here, the Ghost Kills jump down and taking this objective and the broadside. They don't have the fly keyword. So they had to advance. Got the big six though, got all the way down there with their suits behind them, ready to lend some fire support in the next turn. And because everything in the Dalioth Sept has moved, then they won't gain the benefit of cover, with the exception of the Mark drones and the Riptide over here. Cold Star shooting all the way across the battle grid. Other Cold Star, Crute Shapers, Crutes moving forward. Rapid Fire Sniper Drones all moving forward. Now, you've invocated the elements for what uh, now? Storm of Fire. Storm of Fire. So everything within six inches of him gets to re-roll hit rolls of one. Yes. Which is a beautiful thing. There will be a rapid fuselage coming out of there in a second. And spending a command point on Branch, Nova Charge, getting the Riptide up to a three up invulnerable save and overpowering his gun. He takes a mortal wound for his troubles as the engine inside that vehicle that's not a vehicle burns hot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, psychic phase done, let's go on to the shooting phase. Opening up the shooting phase with the marker drones and you're gonna be firing at this dude down here. He's got to go. He's got to go. So um, normally they hit on fives, but you're hitting on fours because you've got a commander with a drone controller nearby. I did. Well, nice. Did you get the Tide of Shadows off him? I, Tide of Shadows is off, but um, it's only minus one to hit to stuff that's wholly within terrain. So he isn't minus one to hit. Just hit him normally. He's got three up and one to save that because it's actually. Right? And lots of hits. Three marker hits on my Grandmaster and Nemesis Dreadnought suit armor means reroll wants to hit. Something to do with seeking missiles, and there isn't any. But also ignoring cover, which is good because with the Tide of Shadows, he did have cover on him, but not anymore as red dots play all over his reflective silver armor. What are we doing next? I'm going to spend a CP to yes. use uplink marker light to okay. put an extra D3 marker light on him. Cool. Uh, get the two on eight, so he's on five marker lights now. Uh, Which is so plus one to hit. Plus one. Yeah, yeah, plus one to hit, ignoring cover. You really want to bring him down. He's got to go. Right, starting the fusion train. Uh, the one that advanced yes. is now firing at him. Yes. Because he advanced, he's threes to hit, but you've got plus one to hit. I do. So you're hitting on twos. Nasty. Oh, <laughs> You're winning on three, strength, strength eight, eight, toughness six. Uh, just two. There is four more. I've got three up no, in no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Three up, invulnerable save because of sanctuary. Um, I fail one. D6 damage. He takes three damage. He's got Leave seven it. left. Are we going to do the other fusion guy yeah. into him? On the next one. Yes. So. Um, three's the wound. Everything wounds this time. Okay, so three up and vulnerable saves. Uh, I think I must spend a command point at this yeah. point. Uh, yeah, one gets through. Uh, not, in fusion range. not in fusion range. Three, three more. more. He's down to four left. Now onto the Riptide, the big gun, the Iron Accelerator, going into my uh, Grandmaster. And the missiles are all firing down into this squad here, which will be minus one to hit that squad. The Nova Charge gun is now hitting on threes. Flat six shots. And reroll, no ones to reroll. Strength of that weapon? Uh, it is strength nine on okay. charge. Okay, threes to wound. Uh, three wounds, AP minus many? Uh, AP minus... Three up in fun, let's assume. Yep, minus three. Uh, I fail one. How much damage is that? Six damage. Really? Yeah. Ouch. Two. He's uh, got two left. You haven't used the CP reroll it. Just needed a four to kill him. Yeah. No. Now two missile pods firing into the squad. Fives to hit because I'm wholly in terrain. Rerolling ones because of sense of stone. No. 
Storm of Fire, Fire of Thing. Something from the... Um, um, uh, it's four hits. What's the guy's called? My brain is now going... Ethereal. That's the Ethereal. Four hits. Strength yeah. five, right? Strength five, totals four. So yes. threes. Threes to wound. Uh, no minus. No minus. So I have a two-up save because I'm in cover. Are you sure it's no minus? I thought missile uh, pods were no, in minus one. They may. It's been such a long time. Cover. Let's see. Really? Smart missile systems. Yep. This unit attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonuses to this. So weapon. no it's cover. So just three up saves yeah. on four guys. And I lose one. My grandmaster's still alive, Carl. I know. This is an issue. <laughs> he's a problem. He's only got yeah. two wounds left. He's, you could leave him alone. He's degraded a little bit. No, I can see him with my commander. Yes. So he's all will be in range, so... Okay. I will fire all of his iron, psychic iron blasters at him. Fire everything! Okay, so this guy's hit some twos as well, right? He does. Nice. Uh, I won't be overcharging it. How many shots? Uh, he has nine shots. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hits on twos. Yes, we're on the ones. There's a couple of ones. Two. Okay. Uh, it is strength seven. Okay, winning on threes. I'm going to try six. Six wings, minus one. No benefit of cover because of the markers. So these are all threes to save. And <gasps> he's on one wound left. What would have happened if you've overcharged? Is two damage. D3 damage. D3 damage. Yeah. Could have been dead. He's still alive. He's still a problem. Where are we going next? I'm going to use my hero shape. Okay, well. let's see if you take down a Grandmaster. That'd be cool. Uh, I believe he hits on the fours. Mm, Rerolling the No, he's you're out of range. The range. Oh dear. So Carl's going to shoot one of the unit of marker drones at the Grandmaster. Didn't want to have to do this, but uh, it just one six to wound to get through and he'll die. You are in rapid fire range. Yeah. Now, they would be hit on th fives, but th fours because of the suit, and threes because of the markers that like hit. So threes to hit. And we're on ones. There's two ones. It's strength five, it's only five to win, but one six and he goes down one mortal wound. And there's a six. There's just, you made it difficult. Just. And they don't explode, he just crumples. One of the suits falls, that is first strike. Now we have the crew rapid fire into the squad. Yep. Minus five. one to hit, so five to hit. Strength four, that's one wound. I have a two up save and save it. Now the next squad of sniper drones will be firing at the same squad. Fives to hit, down to fours to hit because of him, back to fives to hit because of the tide of escalation. Just out of his drone range. So really? Yes, yeah, so six is to hit. Okay, six is to hit. Okay, target three acquired. hits anyway. Target acquired, my friend. Uh, strength five. One mortal wound, one dies, and then two saves. Two saves. Minus one? Minus uh, anything? Minus zero. Not minus not zero. Five. Okay, two up saves. Um, you kill one yep. with the mortal wound. Now, interestingly enough, because it took most of your guns to shoot my Grandmaster down, everything down here is out of line of sight or range. Those at the back, they can't fire. So it just comes down to the ghost kill with his cyclic iron raker. Yes. Firing down into the strike squad here. He has target lock, so he doesn't suffer the minuses to moving and firing. But because of the tide, you are hitting on fives. So, fives to hit. You get three hits anyway. And uh, we on seven. Okay, we on threes. Uh, two wounds, two wounds. minus one. Minus one. Cover, so. so, plus one for cover. Minus one plus one is a three up save. And they save. And that is the end of the Tau shooting phase. Just casualties in the Interceptor squads here in the Nemesis Grandmaster. And you said something surprising. You said Tau are charging. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I took me too long to kill the uh, Nemesis Grandmaster, so... Um, Your crew I'm, are going to charge here. I was here. hoping to kill them off with shooting. Um, and at least not let you score that objective, but... Uh, it's an incinerator. Get on top of it. I know. I'm hoping you'll roll off. Okay, so I roll four shots with the incinerator. It is strength six. I wound three times. It is AP minus one. I kill three of them. Stormbolt is sixes to hit on Overwatch. Uh, four sixes, my friend. Target acquired. Freeze to wound. Um, I wound twice. Two t-shirt saves. And one lives. <laughs> and then heroically makes the charge. Uh, on a... That'll be enough. He's in, definitely. Hero Shaper going for it as well. Let's see if he makes it. Oh, he makes it. Right, we end up here after the pile in. Hero Shaper going first. Three attacks. Hitting on. Hitting on threes. Okay. Oh, nice. 
Uh, strength four with his uh, crude rifle in close combat. Okay, so force to wound. Two wounds. Two wounds. No two, two threat saves. He kills a hero of the Imperium, takes one out. I'm not paying to interrupt. You can attack now with your <laughs> crude dude. Who only gets one attack. <laughs> hit on threes. Okay. Uh, he hits and he is also strength four with his rifle. Doesn't wound. Um, I get to strike you back now. <laughs> uh, he'll go that way. And then these guys. So the guy with the flame will attack the crew, and these two guys will attack him. Guy with flame gets an additional attack because of shock assault. I'm hitting on threes, and I'm wounding on threes. Two wounds on the normal crew that charged in. Double six. No. No. And then uh, the Justicar's car's got the hammer. He's got two attacks plus one for shock assault. Will hit your hero shaper on fours. He hits once. He is strength eight. He wounds. Um, let's do that again. Just in, he doesn't wound because that looked a really cock to me. And then the guy with the two Nemesis uh, Falchions. So they get one attack, plus one for Shock Assault, and plus one for having two pairs of Nemesis Falchions. He hits on threes. And at strength four, I'll be wounding on threes or Crew Shaper's Toughness four. No, it's toughness three. Okay, so threes to wound. They both wound at AP minus two on the Shaper dude. He gets no save. No save. No. 2d3 damage. How many wounds five have we got? Wounds. Five wounds. Five wounds. Um, he's dead anyway, that's five wounds. I'm sorry. I wanted you to... Mm. I'm not going to consolidate off the objective that I need to score at the end of that turn. I don't have any morale. I lost two in that squad, but their leadership eight with the Justicar there. That is the end of Tau turn one. They've killed a suit, which is over 200 points worth of suit there. And in return at the end of turn one, I killed a chunk of crew and some Remora drones. You still have an impressive array of gun. Now, next turn I can jump forward, but then these guys will be in range and starting to speak. And you're on two objectives. Two At the start of my turn two, I'm going to get one, two, three points for these objectives here. You got first strike, but at the start of turn two, it will be four points to one, because I have first strike as well, as we head into Grey Knights, turn two. Bright silver light blasts across the battle grid as the remaining Terminators, the remainder of the Grey Knight force, teleports into play. The Tau Hunters have become the Hunter. There will be a wave of psychic energy and shots erupting from this flank here. There's my brother, Captain, and the Banner, and all the Terminators, and my Warlord, Proud, and Center. And uh, three units of Interceptors are up here as well. The... Nemesis Dread Knight suit has jumped up and onto this terrain feature here and um, yeah for a long time I thought about dropping some in down this flank and cutting into the ghost heel and wiping him out and putting some pressure up here with the interceptors coming in from the right and the left flank but I figure I've started over here so let's finish I should be able to kill a couple more suits which means that uh, the Tau will be pushed back into that corner and will have to respond. It does leave my right flank over here and the area where most of these objectives are controlled by the Tau, essentially. So there are opportunities to score points and score points and score points in later game turns. I'm leaving that, I'm leaving that uh, open to them. And it does leave lots of opportunities in the backfield here for the Crisis Suit team to deep strike in as well. At the start of the turn, I will spend two uh, CP for heated prognosticars to get my Warlord's uh, Invulnerable save up to a three up one more time. And I will try and get Sanctuary on this Dread Knight here, which I do. So he's got a four up Invulnerable save. He's got a three up Invulnerable save. And now I just need to change the tides of the warp. So across here to my Librarian, who's got warp shaping, this will come off on a three. And it does come off, which means that instead of gaining cover and minuses to hit, now I'm doing two damage smite. The smite train will is unlocked. I also need a CP back on a five. Thank you very much. And I get a CP back, put me back to three. That's all the psychic shenanigans for over here. All this lot now need to do some psychic shenanigans. My um, Grandmaster in the suit can do two psychic powers. One of them has to be smite, but one of his psychic powers is armored resilience. I need a six to cast, so a five to cast with Grey Knights. Put it on that squad there, and that passes. It means that they've got a minus one to their wound roll. So um, yeah, minus one to wound them. It's nice. Right, and let's start smiting. Um, everything here 
is in six inch range of my brother captain. So the range of my smite is 24 and everything is gonna do two damage. So let's start off with the Grandmaster on a four. That's a successful smite. Hit your Riptide. I'll try, so it's two, and so I'll try and pass them off on the drones. Yes. Uh, pass them both off, That's so shrugs. Uh, one, does. one dead drone. Let's do this unit. Smites, works. Uh, I'll try and pass it. Uh, pass do it one at a time on the drone, goes off, shrug. No. Dead drone and the suit wound. goes down to two wounds. And then I've got a smite, 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 all of which is going to hit the suit, and then I'll do the last one. So we'll do all one, two, three, four, five of these. How many wounds has he got left? Ugh, that's a question. There's a potential of 10 wounds coming through. 12 wounds left, but a potential of 10 smites, 10 damage of smites coming out here. Five times, so the first one, two wounds. Oh. Second one, what? I'm just saying, I'm gonna try and pass it off on the sniper drones. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, uh, okay, so well, that's four mortal wounds that just yep. smashed so, um, in. Two ups. Yep, so four sniper drones removed. Okay, next one. And again. Uh, goes off. So that's the sniper train dead, right? Yes. So okay, okay. No more drones. No more drones. So we've got another one coming out, which does two wounds to the riptide, and another one coming out, which does two more wounds to the riptide. Because I was hoping all of that would have killed him, and then this squad here would have smitten out and hit your other dude. Now we need to measure to see which of these is going to get hit by this unit of terminators. Yeah, this squad of uh, Term Terminators is going to hit the Fusion Commander if I pull this off. And I do pull it off, so that's two on the Fusion Commander. And then we're coming back here to this unit of um, Interceptors, which are within 24-inch range of um, the Riptide because of the Brother Captain. And that's two more wounds on the Riptide. Right, so the Riptide has taken eight wounds, the Fusion Commander has taken two wounds, I've killed some drones, lots and lots of drones with mind bullets as they flew in front of the psychic energy, the um, living lightning that was erupting from the Grey Knight's lines, and that is the end of the psychic phase. What I've done there, by the way, by upping my damage of my smites there, is I'm no longer in cover. It's no longer going to be minus one to hit, so I do need to do some significant damage because the firepower that is going to come back if I don't kill some of these guys is going to be painful. So with that in mind, let's pull the trigger. Right, shooting phase. I know the rip guy's got a two up save, but let's try and kill him. We have eight storm bottle shots coming out into him, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, and we're going to be wounding on fives with a two up save. He's okay. Next squad, same deal. Um, Re-rolling the ones. That's pretty good array of firepower. It's the wounding on the fives with the top save. Drop dice don't count, um, which is the painful bit. Uh, a wound. <laughs> Sick. Maybe I should start with him. Yes, let's do my nemesis. <laughs> the flamer, heavy flamer. Three hits, strength six, top of seven, right? Fives to wound, nothing. Heavy Psycan, fours to hit, because I moved and it's heavy. Strength seven, toughness seven. I get three wounds at minus one, but you get a plus one because you you stay still. No, the flamer from my wall. Maybe I should stop shooting at him, actually, and <laughs> shoot at something else and then charge him instead. Hmm. No, let's flamer from my warlord and all the shots from a warlord. Flamer hits four times on fives. Um, again... Two up save because of the cover thing. He takes two wounds, unless you want to command point CP it. Yeah, I think okay. so. Heavy incinerators do two damage. No, it doesn't take anything. Now 12 shots of the Gatling B silencer, which is threes to hit because it's heavy. Reroll the ones, and it's only strength four. But it does do D3 damage if I manage to get any damage in. Ooh, I do get some damage in, but you need to fail two up saves, please. You failed two. 2d3 damage. I do 3 damage to the Riptide. I've scratched it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Right, both suits have fired. Two units of Interceptors have fired. This unit of Interceptors on the objective that stood still, bought with discipline, will now fire 28 shots. Threes, but no re-rolls this time. And fives. Twos. And this. One more wound. It's down to two wounds left. I think I should charge it. I've said that before. I'm definitely going to charge it. Uh, now I've got all the Terminators. 
thinking phase. Right, the brother captain's going to change targets <laughs> and shoot at some drones instead. Um, heavy side cannon. One minute, and main range. Yes, just the guy with the storm bolter and the banner behind him. Not so much, but just in range. Minus one to hit, right? Yes. So it's heavy. So I normally hit on twos and then threes, then fours, four shots. Uh, Rerolling ones because of the dude. Um, three hits, strength seven. Two wounds at minus one. On the sniper drones. Uh, so minus one to five ups. No. Kill two. Uh, now I'm definitely not in range. So Storm Bolter from the Paladin Ancient will fire at the Riptide. It's the only thing I can fire at because the rest are all characters guarding him. So he must fire at him. Uh, Rerun the ones and then fives to wound. One more wound on the Riptide. Yes. So I think we measured like these two squads of Terminators have to fire at the Riptide. That squad on the win and can fire at the Cold Star unit. Yeah. So um, that being the case, let's do that. Psy Cannon in this squad, firing out the Riptide. Threes to hit, re-rolling ones, but it is strength seven, so I might be able to scratch him. I scratch him once at minus one, but plus one because of the cover, yeah. he makes it. Now we've got Stormbolt of Death. Four shots from each of the four Stormbolters. Causes 12 hits, which wound on fives. One, just one. <laughs> it works though. It's down to one left. Uh, and now the second squad will fire in. Um, side cannon. Uh, Rerun the ones. Threes miss because it's heavy. Strength seven. One wound. One more. Two up save. The Riptide. <laughs> the Riptide falls. Finally, it took most of my army to do it. And of course, all the other shots from that unit of Terminators were wasted, or rather, uh, bounced into his twitching corpse as he fell over. Riptides do not explode. So now we have this squad here firing at the Cold Star over there, which isn't the minus one to hit one. Uh, he's not your warlord. Um, and I'm spending a command point on Fury of the First? Fury of the Proven. So Terminators get plus one to the shooting attack. They're both characters. I could shoot your warlord, actually. No, but he is... Ah, uh, right, okay. But I mean, but no, I want to kill the one that's injured. Let's kill the one that's injured. So with Fury of the Proven, plus one to hit, that means the Psy Cannon is back to hitting on threes and re-rolling the two ones. And at strength seven, I'm going to be wounding you on threes. Um, I do three wounds at minus one on that Cold Star suit. So two Four wounds. Yep. Has he got two left? He's got two left. Stormbolt of Death. Twos. Rerolling ones. Five. Five three up saves. And he's alive on one wound left. And I think that's all my, that is all my firepower. That is all the firepower from this flank. I'm gonna have to charge him. He's a long way away. Um, so we're gonna come over here. These squads down here are gonna be firing at your Drones. <laughs> Are the drones minus two as well? Just minus one for the drones. Okay, so let's fire everything from this squad at the drones. And I kill the drones, protecting the ghost kill. It took both of the squads down here, the combi plasma from the librarian, to finish the job. And that is the end of my shooting phase. It makes my charge phase redunculous over here. Um, I don't know how long this charge is going to be. And there's going to be a lot of supporting fire overwatch coming in. Is that an 11 inch re rollable? 11 inch to get with an <laughs> And there'll be eight fusion shots coming in. Yes. Well, you know, it's go big or go home. So but let's I can see. Only if... do that once. Yeah. So let's see if this unit can make it in. Uh, Eleven inch charge, which is re-rollable with Fury of the First. No. And now let's take the eight fusion thingy bob overwatch shots. It's the only charge that is in range, dude. Six is to hit. Oh, few. Only one hit, and it Oops. does wound. And I fail to save. D six damage. Um, and you kill the Terminator. No more charges, no more shooting coming up. We have a morale test on the Snapper Drones. Leadership 6, they lost 2 when they were protecting the Riptide. One more of them will run away screaming. The drones scream, or do they just beep, beep, beep their way off? Beep, beep, beep. And that is the end of Grey Knight's turn 2. Now, I dropped like a hammer on this side of the battle grid, but it took everything I had just to take out that Riptide because it was surrounded by drones. It was 4 points to 1. But at the start of the tower turn, they're going to get a point for that one there, making it four points to two. And what I have done is essentially not killed 
any of the uh, commanders and they are quick they are nippy i have not killed the xv88 missile tides in the backfield and they are in range to do some damage your killy units except with the exception of the riptide are still alive yes i've negated and pushed them back into the corner but their killy units are still alive and the crisis suits are ready to drop in as well and as we go into tau turn two no more minuses to hit and no more cover unless i am an entirely within cover like over here so interesting stuff um that were kind of painful kind of worked but i'm still kind of scared because you're still kind of tau how are you feeling yeah i'm losing it i was hoping to keep the riptide alive with the uh using the sniper drones but uh yeah that's gonna hurt but uh, i've still got a few few tricks the other thing as well is all my Terminators are over here now and they move five. Yes, I've got a Gate of Infinity to move one of them out a turn every turn, but essentially my Terminator footprint is going to be here. You know, like I moved away from you in turn one? Yeah. Potentially, I've got 24-inch range on those. With a threat with a five-inch move, I've got a 29-inch threat range with those Storm Bolters. You could potentially move away from the threat range of my Terminators. And as I said, there's one, two, three, four objectives down here. And they're not as protected without the Tide of Shadows next turn as well. Exactly. So this game is still a long way from over. It's still quite tactical. Um, I still don't know which way it's going to go as we head into Tau turn two. Here we are after the Tau movement phase. It's four points to three. They were on two objectives at the start of the turn. The Crisis team have dropped in here, ready to put some pressure on the straggling interceptor units out on this flank. And they've moved up to control three objectives. The crew that were behind there ran onto this objective. Go skill fly keyword jumped off across onto this objective. And the sniper team stayed still, marker team stayed still, broadside stay still. So they'll all gain the benefit of cover. And the ethereal is invoking sense of stone. So everything within six inches of him yes. gets a six up shrug, which is quite nice. And the reason why you jumped the crisis, the ghost kill over here as well is blow away librarian and interceptors holding on to strike team holding on to this objective remember i score at the start of my turn four points to three you kill them i won't score that one crisis teams over here if they kill the interceptors i won't score that one either um, and only get one more point and we got down and had a good look because xv88s are such big boys that the, there is a gap through there and he can see down into the crisis team, uh, strike team, and we're not looking at the, the tips of their stuff. You can actually see some of the silver from that strike team through that gap in the rocks there. So there will be a fuselage coming out in this general direction. Um, of course, Tau don't have um, psychic shenanigans going on. They do have a lot of gun. So let's go on to the shooting phase. But before we begin, you're doing what now? I'm activating carry on. Carry on, what is, what is what? what uh, so it's a Master of War ability which lets any... Pick any commander in my army, so I'm going to pick this Cold Star commander here. Yes. Uh, any unit within six inches with a set keyword. Um, yeah. So that'll be the other commander, the sniper drones and the marker light drones. Yes. Uh, Reroll all failed hits. Okay, it's a once per game thing. Once per game. Nice, so this should be painful. Where are we starting in the shooting phase, sir? We'll start for the marker lights, marker yes. drones. Into your Nemesis Dreadnought. Okay, the one he's got four up in van, he's got three up in van, so we've got five shots. Rerolling all failed hits? Yeah, normally okay. one at a time because I could reroll if I got a mark light off, but I'm rerolling anyway. So okay. Ones. Okay. So, so it's fours to hit because. Uh, fours to hit because of the drone controller, so that is three rerolls. Yes. Uh, three mark lights. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a CP. Yes. Do the mark light bomb. Okay, up like mark light uh, drone. Only one. So that's four mark light hits. It's another CP if you want to make it five. Yep. Yeah, okay. Off. So it's got four mark lights. Five mark lights. He's lit up his silver armor painted red. So we're doing all the fusions at the same time because the only yes. thing in range is this guy <laughs> here. <laughs> Eight fusions coming in, hitting on twos, re rolling. Re everything and wounding on three so seven hits threes to wound oh my oh my three wounds emperor the emperor protects mm. three four up and vulnerable saves does he protect let's find out um he does only one gets through and i'm not going to cp re-roll it because i want to keep these cps for other shenanigans that's the three, three. it's down to nine wounds left dude yeah he should be dead yeah, I know. That was eight. He should be dead. I know. I, feel, I actually feel bad for you there. A bit of a whiffer. A bit of a whiffer. 
So we're going on to the broadside, firing everything at the stroke team? Everything at the stroke team. Everything. Okay. Um, uh, smart missiles first. Nice. Hitting on fours. Yes. Uh, or are they minus one? No, no minuses no at minus. the moment. That tide is not in effect. Fours to hit. And threes to wound. So it's five. And these ignore cover. They do. Nine three up saves. And you kill only... No, you kill three of them. Three of them. And it looks like this. Now we've got the heavy missiles coming in. Hitting on fours. At strength seven, wounding on threes. Right, high yield missile pods are minus one, but I get plus one for cover, so a bunch of three up saves again. And these do D. One minute. I just. I was going to say they do D3 damage, but I, they're one wound. Um, they're still alive. The Ember protects! Yeah, that happened. But the snipers, they're tall boys as well. They can see through the gap. They can see this guy's red helmet. Three sniper shots coming in, hitting on fours because of the drone controller, re-rolling everything because of Cow Yon. Only one hit at strength five, wounding on a... Not that. Oh dear. Tau firepower is not working right now. So it's going to be the ghost kill then, firing everything. It wanted to fire at the librarian, but instead is going to have to fire at this strike team. So we have the two fusion. Fours. One hit and twos. It wounds. It's minus four. I don't get a save. Kill one. Mind you, I'm in cover. So if I roll a six, mm -hmm. I really hope I don't roll a six because yeah, that would just sting. Would I don't roll a six. You do kill one. You kill the silencer. And then the fusion collider? Uh, iron Raker. Iron Raker. Uh, so this one hits on fours. Yes, because you've got the thing which allows you to move and fire. Target lock. Yes. Strength seven. Two wounds. Two more wounds. Minus one. Minus one. So threes. Uh, he's dead. You kill the you kill the squad. It should have been easier. Yeah. That's it. The chunk of the firepower from the Tau Force over this flank is out. Uh, has fired, and that commander is out of range. Um, just tickling the Nemesis at Dread Knight suit and wiping out the strike team here. It should have been easier for that. So it's down to this Crisis team to regain Tau firepower pride. The pr for this is for pride. We are firing in to the strike team, the mm -hmm. interceptors, and your. Spending a command point on strike and fade. Yeah, it's a Daleth stratagem. Uh, let me move them six inches once I've fired. Nice, okay. All jump, shoot, jump. Jump, shoot, jump. Old school. Yeah. So, so uh, what three we first? plasma rifles. Yes. All hit. Nice. Strength seven, right? Strength seven. They all wound. Minus three. Minus three. Yeah. So I am in cover. So I need fives. Um, you kill three. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then two shots each with the missile pods. Yes. Also okay. kill fours. That's pretty good shooting, yeah, Tex. Decent. And this is also strength seven. Uh, only two wounds. Two it's wounds. minus one for a normal missile pod, so plus one for terrain. Um, you killed four in total from that squad. And so the crisis suits jump, shoot, jump into cover there. They'll gain the benefit of cover. That's the end of the tower phase. I have a morale to take with this squad of interceptors, which lost four. One plus four, they hold morale. We know no fear. And at the end of Tau turn two, it is four points to three in favour of the Imperium. That should have been a much more brutal phase for the Tau, but they've done what they can. Um, now my librarian is looking a little bit exposed. My footprint is all the way up over here. And then at the start of my turn three, I'm going to get one point, two points, making it six points to three. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be getting a point for that one next turn <laughs> some, for some reason. Mind you, I could jump some guys over there. So six points to three, three in favour of the Grey Knights. Oh, you've got three objectives. Have I got three? Yeah. I've got another one there. I forgot about that one. Seven points to three in favour of the Grey Knights. As we head on to Grey Knights, turn three. Here we are after my movement phase. Seven points to three, however. It's a long way from over from the Tau, because they're on one, two, three objectives. So it'll be seven points to six at the end of the Tau phase, unless I kill a couple of the units off of these objectives here. Um, so what I've decided to do is spend a CP for teleport shunt. Interceptors can only teleport once per game unless you spend a CP. So the ones on that objective there, shunted over here. And I've done this weird string out. I'm within three inches with my Justicar and the Librarian. But they are over this side. So the broadsides can no longer see them. <laughs> They're going to have to move. And I think their weapons are heavy except for maybe the smart missile system. Um, so that might be able to keep them alive. Um, and then the rest of my stuff, I've got this unit on that objective. Um, the, uh, the Nemesis Dreadsuit has moved down. I haven't got enough CP to put Sanctuary on him again, so he's just got a 5-up invulnerable save. And with the re-roll charge from first to the fray, I think we worked out a 10-inch to the 
to these dudes and a nine inches to the um, sniper drones and everything around here has shifted. But what I need to do now <laughs> is for magic to happen in the right order. So um, let's make the magic happen. The first thing I'm gonna do is try and Gate of Infinity, that squad there. This, these interceptors are in 12 inch range. I'm gonna need a five for this. It's a six, but a five because of Grey Knights. That works. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna put them on this objective where they are nice and safe and toasty. Like that, putting them on this objective, which uh, they were too far out of line of sight of range to do anything effective anyway. And that puts me on three objectives. I can't even move my way out. I'm not counting this sticky up gun as something I can see. That's just cheeky. So I can't see them. I can't shoot them. As I said, the range of terminators is quite short, but I am on an objective. So I've done that. Next thing I need to do is um, from my warlord, I'm going to cast armored resilience on this squad here. I need a five and that passes. So it's minus one to the wound roll on that squad. And now I'm still in 24 inch range smite. So let's smite. That passes. And the two damage snipe rocks out and kills a sniper drone. Now this suit has sanctuary, he's dead anyway. So I'm gonna put it on my warlord. Um, that works, so my warlord is back up to a three up and vulnerable save, improving his up in vulnerable from a four to a three. Um, so smite, so they've done their powers, he's done their powers. So we're back down to this squad here, still within six inch range of the brother captain. Oh, um, yes, yes, we're smiting. Um, that passes, and because of line of sight and range, you can't actually see that one. He can only see, he can see this is the closest guy in line of sight and range to that squad. He's got one wound left, so trying to pass it off. On the shield drones. Yes. Uh, they both pass off, so shrugs. No. Kills two shield drones. That's that smite done. We're on to this smite, still within six inches of my brother captain. It will come down here on the crisis teams and put two wounds on the crisis teams. I think they start with three each. Three wounds, yeah. So smite, no, 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 no. Yeah. So they need to smite, they need to smite and the brother captain. This is the Terminators and my brother captain in the middle now. So Terminator squad, number one, it'll hit the sniper drone and kill that unit. That's a dead unit. So the snipers are finally gone. Uh, squad behind will flash out and it will hit those marker drones and kill two marker drones. And then Brother Captain. We're going to have to measure up to see where the Brother Captain smite goes. Um, but that passes. Hits that guy there. One of the suits is finally brought down. One of the commanders. And then the Paladin with the banner. This will actually hit the marker drones. And um, fails. I finally fail a smite. Then we come all the way over here to this squad that's shunted over here. It'll hit the ghost kill. And that's a wound on the ghost kill. And then what I need to do is get a command point back. A command point, this is a five up re-rollable. So I'm back up to two command points. And what I'm gonna do is switch the tides of the warp back down to Empiric Shadowing. I need a five. And that passes, which means every unit which is now in cover, which is this unit, this unit, this unit, this unit, is now a minus one to hit and counts as in cover and everyone else counts as in cover. That is a, a mean combination there, if yes. you manage to keep your warp dude alive. I was hoping to get him last turn, but uh, yeah. I a little bit. So I was hoping yeah. he didn't die last turn. <laughs> so, But being able to smite all the way through and then switch it back. Brutal. Right, now let's shoot some guns. Tide of Shadows now, back in effect, really helping out the Grey Knights here. This unit that shunted over is going to unload six Storm Bolters into the Crute and hit five times and wound five times, but they are on a train feature, so they do have five up saves, their t-shirts improved. Four of them die though. Really? And then my librarian trying to force morale here is gonna shoot them with a plasma, and it misses. Did think about putting shots into the ghost kill there, but I'm not gonna kill him, I'm not gonna degrade him with this amount of firepower down here, just trying to force morale. Um, so we're back across here. Um, there's one suit here on one wound. Yes, you've got a two up cover save, but it'd be rude not to shoot a year with this unit coming in. So let's do it with these guys here because, you know, if you fail a two up save, I oh know there's only six storm bodies there. If you fail a two up save, I will kill a suit. So threes to hit. And crisis suits of toughness, four, just with many wounds. Um, so four, two up saves on the crisis team. One of them on one wound left, make the saves. And then 
unit number two will try the same thing. Just try and kill one. Threes. <laughs> one hit. Oh no, look, I'm in reroll range yep. of my things, so. Um, I got one hit, a couple of ones, I don't know. Anyway, two hits now, let's say two. No wounds, they're gonna live. The crisis suit is gonna live. Right, so that's done. It's now Terminators and these dudes. Hmm. The Paladin is out of range, which means the, uh, the strike team behind the Terminators behind, they are also out of range. So it's just my brother captain, these Terminators and the two Nemesis Dread Knights. So the brother captain is going to fire at those drones. Let's get rid of these marker drones. I need threes to hit and I'm re-rolling ones. It would be twos, which become threes. At strength seven is two, oh, only one wound at minus one. They stay still though. They did, yeah. So no. Kill one anyway. Right, I want to charge that cold star guy. So let's fire everything from my terminators into the two remaining drones. And then we remembered Sense of Stone and then went back through the footage and put some drones back and then I fired my terminators everything at them and we ended up back to two drones again. So we went back up some drones, back down some drones after remembering that six up shrug from Sense of Stone, which leaves my two dread knights left to speak. So um Let's, I want these marker drones dead, so let's fire the 12 shots from my Gatling silencer into the drones. Now, sense of stone, they would be dead, you see, otherwise I could be firing in at suits here. Uh, Rerolling ones, hitting on threes, um, and you're getting plus one to your cover, right, because they stay still, these drones. Yeah, the drones did, yeah. Force to wound, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight wounds, so that's not bad. Yeah, they're dead. Oh, now they're finally dead. Now they're definitely dead. Took an uh, extra... I will do my sense. I'm not going to pass them. Oh yeah, will, of course. Yeah, sense of stone again. There was minus. Uh, just no four. minuses. No. No. Yeah, right. Okay. Finally they are. <laughs> and now we're on to this suit, which is going to do the flamer at the flame. He can hit and the heavy side cannon because I want to charge him. So I'm going to put the heavy side cannon in your cold star commander over there. Okay. Uh, the heavy side cannon will hit on fours. Um, I hit four times and it is strength seven, so I wound on threes. It wounds four times. Now, this is AP minus one, two damage. And mm. you need to make six. Oh, you got a command, uh, command point. I'm going to command point one of those because otherwise. Okay. Four up save. Dead. No. Ooh. Now you need to make six sense of stone saves. Oh, it's is this your warlord? That's my warlord. Beautiful. Die, warlord. No, you're still alive. One more wound left. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna do uh, the heavy flamer into him, which hits three times, it's strength six. It doesn't win. And that is the end of my shooting phase. Um, so I'm gonna charge now. So this guy needs a 10 inch re-rollable charge against your fusion suit commander. And he hits on sixes and he doesn't hit. Yeah, carry on just last until the end of your turn. So no re-roll in that. Now this 10 inch re-rollable charge, and that's a fail. The whole charge is re-rollable. And that's a fail. I fail the charges. There's no morale to take for you. Um, that happened. We missed a couple of sensor stones there and went back as far as we can. But ultimately, by remembering it just at the last second, it has kept your warlord alive on one wound remaining. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of my turn. Um, you have no morale. At the start of your turn, you will get three points, making it seven points to six. So it's only one point in it as we head to town, turn three. And so there is one point in it. Carl spent two CPs to uh, insane bravery to keep the town on this objective here. And one of the Cold Star suits has jumped all the way over to challenge this objective with my librarian and the interceptors and the crisis team are moving over as well. There is only one unit of three holding onto that objective, which I will score at the start of my turn. So trying to take away points from me before it gets into my turn, because it's such a close game. You did think about jumping your suit onto there, but you figure he's dead anyway. He's not so long you... for this world. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. So if he was there, he'd get smitten and attacked. And yeah. if he's, but but by keeping him there, at least you get the plus one to cover. Yes. He's only got one wound left anyway, so you might as well give him the benefits as you can. And the ethereal was jumped back with sense of stone. No, uh, storm, of fire. storm of fire. Yeah. Rerolling hit rolls of one yes. with the XV eighty eight teams. Uh, so, he moved as well, so he, that one will be a minus one to hit. Right, okay. Which one moved? Uh, this one here, he was, right. he was, you couldn't see what I wanted. Him to okay. Do, so he's just coming over there. 
So the tower is spreading out to challenge the objectives that they can in this very, very close game. Let's move on to the shooting phase. Opening salvo coming from the Warlord on one wound left. Overcharging. Overcharging. Triple cyclic iron bar set into this Nemesis Dread Knight here on twos. <gasps> Everything hit, because on ones you'd have lost your warlord. <laughs> this gets up to strength what? Uh, this is strength eight now. Nice, okay, winning on threes. And that suit, as we said, has only got a five up invulnerable save. How much damage does this do? D3. Seven wounds come through. D3 damage a time, five up saves. What is the AP? Uh, minus one. Minus one, yeah, still five up save. Minus one, sorry, no, my three up, my two up becomes a three up then. Yep. Yeah. Oh, the two up becomes a three up. Becomes a two up because of Back shadows. to a two up because of shadows. Yes. That's dirty. That's dirty. Very dirty. Twos. <laughs> um, I'm making more. Okay, across to the right, Frank. The crew uh, unloading into the strike tree. Minus one to hit because they're fully in cover. So three hits. Strength four. One wound and I have a two up save. And I make the save. Next up to the ghost kill, onto the same strike team. You are overcharging. I'm going to overcharge the Iron Wrecker. Um, I'll do the fusion first. So okay. Hitting on fours. Minus, minus one. one. Sort of fives. Nothing. No. Uh, oh, minus one. Cyclic Iron Wrecker. So if you overcharge it on ones, you take wounds. On ones and twos, you take wounds because I'm wholly within cover. Tide of shadows. So we're doing it anyway. <laughs> and the ghost kill puts three mortal wounds on itself and uh, misses with hit. the other shots. Oh, no. Right, splint fire always works. So the SMS from the broadsides are going into the strike team because they ignore cover. They do. And the high yield missile pod is going to hit the Nemesis Dread Knight. So uh, SMS, uh, how many shots is that? Eight each. Eight each. Sixteen shots, but it will be hitting on fives into the strike team, but you are re-rolling ones. Five hits with the re-rolls, and there are three and wounds. Um, and these ignore cover as well, right? They do indeed. So, um, it's just a threat save, four times. And you kill one of them. Then after rolling to hit and rolling to wound with the high yield missile pod, seven wounds came through on the Dread Knight. It is minus one, but I get plus one. Yes. Because of Tide of Shadows, so twos. And I make all of those saves. Right, quad fusion from the commander into the strike team. Threes to hit. This will do it. All three hit. Three out of the four. Twos to wound. Three wounds, this is minus four, right? Minus four. So I need to make some sixes. I don't make any sixes, you wipe out the interceptors. And now the last thing left to fire, the crisis team is going to try and unload into this squad on the Chaos Ruin, trying to take them off of this objective. We have Plasma Fire coming in first, and it is fives to hit. Yeah, one hit. And threes to wound. Nothing. Fives to wound. And the missile Missile pods coming in, three That's hits better. with the missile pods. These are strength seven, right? Yes. Okay, two so wounds. two wounds, then minus one. Minus one. Plus one is threes, and I make the saves. Then the crisis suits jumped, move, shoot, jump one more time. One CP left for the Tau, two CP for me, because I've been farming them. And another underwhelming shooting phase from the towel that minus is to hit and the bonus is for cover it's it's a new thing for grey knights and they're taking advantage of it so it was six points to seven and um, we're contesting this objective down here now so at the start of my turn i'm going to get two points for these two objectives up here making it uh nine points to six nine points to six in favor of the imperium um yeah but you're going to be on three still, and mm. you're line breaking. Hmm. Let's go on to Grey Knights turn four. The Grey Knights push forward. I'm not going to change my tides any more time. I could go up to two damage smite, but I need to stay safe. I'm in the lead by a couple of points. I need to hold on to this lead. So with my Librarian, let's get that um, Empiric Domination one more time. And that passes, that gets me up to 3 CP, and then I'm going to smite this cold star that I'm going to charge. And that uh, I can re-roll with, with my relic. And that does one mortal wound to that cold star suit. Then the interceptors will try and smite the crisis suits, and that fails. Then down into this pile here, he's smiting out, it'll kill the warlord. Dead warlord. 
but no sanctuary this turn. That's the thing. Maybe I should have sanctuaried. Okay, and then we have smite, 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 smite. All one damage smites coming out and flat. One minute. Hmm. No, let's smite. They're not smiting because they're gonna. Yes, yes. Do that first. <laughs> He will smite with his first one on a ghost kill. I need a five plus one, so that works. That's a wound, another wound on the ghost kill. And then he'll put armored resilience on this unit of terminators back here, which passes. And then they'll smite the ghost kill, which perils on them, which I'll use a CP reroll on one of the dice. A six plus a four is a 10, so that's still a smite. And then the interceptors will gate them, and that passes. And they disappear and reappear down here, ready to support my back lines. And then I've got a smite, which passes, a smite, which passes, and a one damage smite, which passes. Three more smites into the ghost kill. Puts the ghost kill down to one wound left. Now this nemesis dread knight will shoot him, opening up the shooting phase with the heavy incinerator for one hit, which doesn't wound. Heavy side cannon hit on fours because I moved, and another minus one to hit because he is a ghost kill. So fives, and I hit three times anyway. Uh, at strength seven, toughness of a ghost kill? Uh, he is toughness six. Two wounds at minus one, but plus he one. Move, so he is yep. a two up, covers head, comes a three up. Yep. No. And he dies, and that is the end of the uh, ghost kill, unless you spend your last CP on him. Yeah, I think I will. Okay. Yes. Ghost kill is still alive on one wound left, uh, which means my nemesis grandmaster is gonna have to shoot him. Gatling silencer on threes, re-rolling ones, and fives to wound. Three two up saves, and it's still alive. So that squad of terminators can see him. They will fire. Here's the side cannon. This is gonna be fours to hit, re-rolling ones. So two hits, strength seven. Uh, two wounds at minus one, so plus one. And that finally kills the ghost kill. As the rest of the shots also pound into the rocks there and take him out. Now we're down to these three units of Terminators over here. This squad back here will unload everything into the crisis suits. And I'm going to spend the CP on Fury of the Proven, giving them plus one minute, one minute, one minute. There's a unit of four there. There's a unit five there. I'll spend the CP on these guys. <laughs> these guys will just hit at their normal ballistic skill. Yes, I'll do that. With bolted discipline though, it's still 12 storm bottle shots coming out. Hitting on threes. Wounding on fours. Uh, two wounds, two, three up saves on the crisis suits. Three, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, they're okay. And side cannon. Hits twice. And wounds on threes. Two wounds at minus one. Two four ups. No. That will kill a crisis suit and put one down to two wounds. It looks like this. The incinerator is still in range, so the interceptors will fire in. D6 auto hits with the incinerator. Hits three times and it's strength six. I wound on threes. That's one wound at minus one on the crisis suit, so a four up. He makes it. And then we have Stormbolt of Death coming in. Um, only eight Stormbolt shots, so don't need more dice. Threes to hit. Wow, everything hits. I want <laughs> force to wound. Um, that, wow, uh, five wounds, five wounds, five wounds on the crisis suits, and that tickles him down to one wound left. Now, finally, I have this dude team here. Last thing left to shoot. Love to shoot him, but he's a character. So they will unload everything with uh, plus one to hit into the crisis team, and one still alive. On two wounds left, didn't expect that to happen. Um, I'm going to overcook a combi plasma at point blank range from my librarian. Go big or go home into your cold star yes, suit. I'm definitely not going to overcook <laughs> this combi plasma. <laughs> Force to hit. Uh, one hit, because I would have killed myself. Uh, threes to wound. That doesn't wound. Okay, that's the end of my shooting phase. We have some charges coming on. My librarian is going to charge your cold star suit. You've got four shots with fusion to kill him before he engages. <gasps> One hit. Two's to wound? Yep. It wounds. Minus four. I need a five up invulnerable save, which I fail. And this does two D6 damage. You kill my librarian dead. Bam. 
Okay, that worked. And that stops me scoring that objective. And that makes you score that objective. Yeah. Mm. Right, we have nine inch charges coming. Well, that's longer than the nine inch charge. We've got much longer than nine inch charges. <laughs> uh, right, we'll do the Overwatch off camera, but let's see if I can make the charge with the interceptors. 12, <laughs> they're gonna be in. See if the Terminators can get there as well. No. No damage on Overwatch. We make the charge. Justicar swings his ham thunder hammer his and hits on fours. He will wound on twos. I wound three times, three six up saves to keep him alive. No, and that was nine damage, crushing the crisis suit into oblivion. In the town movement phase, the Cold Star commander who was deep in the grain outlines thought he was not long for this world if he stayed there. So he has fallen back. The Tau are regrouping and preparing the, to sell their lives. Let's go on to the Tau shooting phase. Storm of fire being yelled, being invocated by the ethereal there. Smart missile system coming into the Grey Knights in the shrine. High yield going into the closest Dread Knight. So fives to hit these guys here. But you are re-rolling ones. Six hits, wounding on threes. And these are all minus one? Uh, no minus one. But they ignore yeah, cover. They yeah, so three up saves. And uh, one in this squad dies. And then high yield missiles slam into the Nemesis Dread Knight on fours, re-rolling ones. And then three to wound. Six wounds, but still a two up save because of the Tide of Shadows. I fail one, two. It does D two D3 damage for two damage. <laughs> So he's on seven left and now four fusion guns. Rerolling ones because of Storm of Fire go slamming in. They'll wound on threes. And three of them wound. Five of them vulnerable saves. No sanctuary on him this time. And I fail two. I fail, I pass two, sorry. One gets through. It, it is d6 damage for five damage. And that suit is down to two left. So crew, for the win. Force to hit. And five to wound. Two wounds. He has two wounds left. Two up saves. He's still got two wounds left, and that is the end of Tau turn four. And when we move into Grey Knight's turn five, I currently control two objective, making it twelve points to eight. And now a silver hammer will descend upon the Xenos. In the Grey Knight movement phase, these Terminators stay on this objective here. Uh, the interceptors on the shrine continue to guy, guard it. The other interceptors from here have jumped over within smite range of the Cold Star unit. So we're going to do that. Smite with the interceptors. Uh, takes a wound off. Smite with the terminators. Takes another wound off. Sanctuary from him onto my commander. Fails. And then smite coming out from my commander. 12-inch uh, range? Yes, I'm in range. Takes another wound off. And then we have 24 inch range smites coming out. Works, is it dead yet? One wound left. One wound left. The brother, captain himself, kills it. And then all the other smites, let's see if the interceptors are in range of your ethereal. Yeah, they are. Uh, perils, I perils myself using my last command point. So the perils was a four, so I don't perils, and a three plus one is four, I need fives to smite. So that is a smite, and it does hit your ethereal, and then my commander will, he's got sanctuary, will put the minus one to wound on the terminators, which has never come into effect, which works. And that is the end of my psychic phase. Now we're going to shoot some guns. The flamer and all the guns from the dread knight into the ethereal hits five times. It is strength six, and it wounds four times. And six is to save at AP minus one, and each of these doing two damage. The ethereal is wiped out. I was gonna fire all the guns into him, uh, which leaves the rest of my army firing at broadsides, which stood still with a two up save. And from here, it turned out only a couple in that Terminator squad were in range of the broadsides. I fired in and caused no damage whatsoever. But the uh, interceptors and the terminators here could fire up at the crew that were guarding that objective and have wiped them out. And that is the end of my turn.
and at 12 points to 8 in favour of the Grey Knights, with them line breaking, with the Ethereal dead, with all the Tau commanders dead, and the only thing left in the uh, Tau army is these two broadsides over here. Uh, Carl is conceding. Carl has decided that the broadsides are going to run and quit the field and get in an Orca dropship and get the hell out of Dodge. So it is a Grey Knight victory, and this is the way the world ends. So the Tau came to this place wondering what all this kerfuffin was about and the Grey Knight said no you shall not pass, you should not be here and have wiped them out and have uh, stopped a demonic incursion. There's the good news. The bad news is, wow, what happened there? <laughs> Grey Knights got good. Grey Knights um, are OP. <laughs> well, against uh, this particular list, definitely. Well, I thought you, you definitely brought an unconventional mm. Tau list, and it was really interesting to see um, different units that you don't always see in a battle report. Oh. And against any other Grey Knight list before um, that Ritual of the Dam dropped, it would have probably annihilated me. Uh, it would have been a, certainly a lot... Uh... A lot closer. I think I think it's been a game changer that Ripture Love the Dam. That yeah. minus one to hit Grey that. Knights and when they're in cover and the ability to switch between them. Yeah, that's that's massive. To uh, roll through a turn with double smites and then roll yeah. back out of the turn with that buff that protects you yeah. from shooting. And the fact that you can pick whichever one you want to start with as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think um and with bolted discipline moving forward and with that fury of the first ability or whatever it's called, fury of the proven ability, yeah. some of the better stratagems from the Space Marine book. Uh what also made a difference is something that I have never brought ever in my history of playing Grey Knights, which I must admit is very narrow, is this brother captain, which doubles the range of smites. Yes. Having twenty-four inch range two damage smites coming out from a character that can't be targeted is just stupid. Yes. I thought I'd drop them in here and see how well they do. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me a lot of gun to kill the Riptide, but as you pointed out in your list, you didn't have much high AP. No. Once the Riptide was gone and the Fusion Commanders were gone. Yeah, it made it very tricky because my minus one on all my ion weapons was kind of mitigated by your yeah, that's true. shadows. Because the shadows thing, yeah, that's what kicked in. So you've got lots and lots of minus one AP shots, which you would have been wounded. Four up saves yes. or three up saves, but I was just getting two up, two up, two up all the time. Plus, I, I couldn't do anything about your psychic. It was just that's you know, true. The mob wound output was uh, brutal. Um, yeah, I think with Tau, if you're not running the triple Riptide shield drawn spam list to eat the mortal wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you saw how hard it was to take out one Riptide. So if there was triple Riptides with Shield Spam, instead of killing Croot in turn one, I'd just have been killing drones. Yeah. And then you'd have had the Riptides, which would have had a serious mm -hmm. chance of killing yeah. some of the Grey Knight. Because essentially I've got quite a lot left. Yeah. I but know. if there was much less left here, um, it would have been a closer game. In the end, you stayed in it, stayed in it, stayed in it. But this, this silver avalanche could not be stopped. They just kept coming and coming and coming. And like you said, it's surprisingly manoeuvrable as well with the uh, Gate of Infinity and the Interceptors shunting all over the place. It doesn't yeah. matter where I was pushing myself back, you were there. <laughs> yeah, these guys can always move once per game and it's one CP to do it again. And then with Gate of Infinity, you can chuck it on a unit and you can move them. I have found that Grey Knights can be surprisingly mo mobile yeah. foot Grey Knights. And I think... Um, just it's just two damage smite is dirty because smite typically is three damage yeah. on a five and people rely on it who don't have the wound output of grey knights yeah. but grey knights smiting on fours at two damage across the line at 24 inch range grey knights are OP. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they do against a non-demon force imagine against demons where smites do four damage yeah probably. where they got re-rolled to if you're, if you're not running noble demons that's yeah yeah, Grey Knights versus Demons would be brutal. Mind you, Demons have that strategy where they can just pick a unit and bring it back on the table. Noble Demons would be interesting because you'd still get your feel not bearing rolls. But yeah. uh, I think anything other than them is, uh, would struggle. Yep. Still. Um, well, that's what they're meant to be, though. Yeah. Demon Hunters. But like you were saying as well, um, Grey Knights typically are very good in the fight phase. We didn't yes. really get to see that. No. You blew me away in the psychic phase and the yeah. demon phase, so... Yeah, normally you rely on them getting in because all of their weapons are D3 damage, yeah. D3 damage. But because of bolted discipline and because of that reroll hit rolls of one or hitting on twos, because of all these buffs and the damage, you can use them as a semi-mobile gun platform yeah. type list with the minuses to hit them. Hmm. 
It's interesting. It's a. It's an interesting. Green knights are good. Green knights good. I don't think I brought a really tough green knight list either, which is because I think if you no. maxed it out to max out a green knight list, you basically bring as many strike squads as you can yes. for that two damage, two damage, two damage smite. Um, that's the way to go. And maybe with triple dreadnoughts in the backfield, mortis mm. dreadnoughts with las cannon missile launchers. Yeah, that'd be really good because you can astral aim as well behind and stick yep. them on the line of sight. Um, yep. Terminators are really good as well, particularly in this type of mission where you're having to hold objectives every turn with the uh, plus one to the armor save because of the Tide of Shadows. Rock hard to go. See, I rate Terminators, even normal Space Marine yeah. Terminators, since the new Space Marine Codex dropped because of Bolt of Discipline and because of yeah. that uh, stratagem which allows them to hit on twos. And you can give them minus one to wound as well. Yeah. Well, the thing that you can do with Grey Knight Terminators is minus one to hit with that Tide in place, minus one to wound with that um psychic power in place and there's also a stratagem for minus one damage yeah. so for when you're spending one strat one point you can get minus one to hit minus one to wound minus one damage on a unit of terminators I'm it's just silly <laughs> yeah i do and you can take terminators as troops in a gray knight build yep um anyway that was a very interesting game it's interesting to see the meta shift the meta change and it was it was really good to play a completely different grain uh, Tau list as well with different units in. So I want to thank you very much for coming all the way down here. You're welcome. Um, did you enjoy 27 minutes at least? I did, yeah. It was, uh, it was, a, good, uh, it was a good campaign. <laughs> would recommend. Would recommend. Um, so 27 minutes available on deploymentzone.tv as well as I think we've got four or five other campaigns on there now. So if you want to support us and want to see those narrative campaigns, then I encourage you to come join us in the deployment center. I could really, really do with your help, guys. Help get me out of the factory and do this professionally. That is the goal. Anyway, um, bow out by Hot Dives Miniatures. Um, everything else by me, except for this terrain, which I can't remember where it comes by. The, um, the command point tokens, these things, the dice, they're all available on the uh, merchandise page on DZTV. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Happy Wargaming.